All right, so this is where I am in the stage. I have almost got my pizza all the way down. I just need a couple more frames. So my next frame, it's he's going to be letting go of the head. And it snaps back. And my pizza sunset keeps going down. And now I just need to pick the body for the bird. And I think I want it to be the lower body. So it's kind of like it recoils with the snap of the head. Boom, like pinball. All right, so now what do I do? I've set it up in my assets. So I have certain layers turned on of all these different asset layers. It builds my next frame. That frame is this one right here, where now the hand is gonna leave and my bird is there or my creature and I'm gonna set it to reset. So I just need to get rid of that pizza, right? So. Now I have to bring that frame over. So I flatten it, layer flatten. I select it all. Now that it's flattened, it's all in one image. All those layers compressed together. And I copy it all by going to edit copy. You gotta select it all before you copy it so it gets everything in the frame. Then I go before I flatten the image in my history. And then I go to my stage and I paste that last frame on. I save it. And then I go back to my assets and I build the next frame. I'm going to turn off the hand. The hand is no longer going to be there. I'm going to move the pizza down. Can I get it all the way under the horizon on this move? I don't know if that's... No, I need to go maybe two more. And what's been working for me is to see the trajectory of the pizzas two steps before and kind of move it down in that way. And even though you can't really tell in a still image that the pizza is still there, you'll be able to tell when it's time-based because our eye is very sensitive to movement. Okay, so it goes from this to this, and I obviously need to move the creature, but now I can go back to just these full creature poses. That's a good one. Then layer flatten, select all, copy, go back before I flattened it, go to stage, paste it in, save it. Just looking at the trajectory of that pizza sun before I move on. And is the movement too erratic? It's pretty erratic, but that's okay. The bird's just been messed with a lot. Okay, so now I can get rid of the sun, I think. I think it can just go away. And I think I can just go to my very first frame. So let's check my very first frame. And I know I've set to reset when I can just toggle between the first frame and the last frame and it makes sense. So that's my last frame. And that's not my first frame because <laughs> I didn't turn them all off. There we go, that's my first frame. That's my last frame. And I see the problem. Do you guys see the problem? There's a little hole in my mountain, which I don't want the pizza to fill. So would you uh, do the stamp and then just kind of fill in that area? Yes, but instead of having to rebuild all the frames where the pizza is showing in that little window, I'll show you how we can be more clever about it. I'm going to build on the stage a little asset that just Oh, I think can work that can just float above or into it all yeah so basically I have to fill in this little gap here even at this low resolution or it's just gonna really bug me so what I'm gonna do is grab this 
portion. I'm not even going to clone stamp. I'm just going to internally composite. Grab a clump, move it over here, transform it in. The problem is I don't want that to go in front of the bird. All right, so this is really tricky. I have to check it frame by frame and have this float above all of them and basically patch them. And that's that's my mistake for this animation, right? There's always little mistakes that you learn from. No mistakes, just lessons. Lessons do not end. That's the creative process. But it's all about how you can kind of think through it and understand it. So I'm just going to put that little patch there. I have a hard time leaving things unimproved when I can improve them. So I'm going to soften the edges of that patch, then move it in place. Soften the edges. Okay, so now it works for that frame. But does it work for the next frame? Yes. Should work for the next frame too? Yes. It's kind of interfering a little bit, but that's fine. It's transparent enough. Shouldn't be a big deal. The next frame. Yeah, that looks good. Next frame. Yeah, it looks good. Josh, stay with me. We're almost done. This frame, no bueno. So it, it's not going to work there. So I'm going to keep that in mind, OK? So layer 17, I'm going to mark that as green. I'm going to need to, to fix that. Same thing for this one. Can I get away without it? Yeah, I think so. So basically from layer 17 on, I need to clean that up. So this is what's interesting. I now have all my frames and I have this little patch thing that I'm going to use when I need to. Now I'm in my stage. I'm done with my assets. Unless I wanted to go through and clean up and rebuild every frame with that patch, I don't need to do it in assets anymore. So I'm going to save my assets and close that. Now I'm going to do what's called animating on the stage. Bless you. This is a step many of you are at. You're going to say window timeline to get to our animation tool. And when window timeline comes up, you'll have an option for video timeline or frame by frame. You want to click on frame by frame and you'll get to here. Once you're in the frame by frame timeline, this is what the video timeline looks like. And you can always switch in this little corner. You're going to click in what are called the window options of the timeline. And you're going to say make frames from layers. It's just how we've done our animation tests. You'll see I have this frame here, which is just that little patch. What's great about the timeline is the simplest way to use it is to just make each layer one animation frame. But you can also use it in this instance to program the eyeballs of your layers. So I'm going to add the patch to layer one just by turning on layer 23 just on layer one or in frame one. These are frames, these are layers. Frame two, that patch is still there because I turned that patch on. So now this layer is always going to be on unless I turn it off. Still works there, still works there, does not work there, right? See how the patch is covering it up? So on frame five, I'm going to turn that patch off. Frame six, I'm going to turn the patch off, still okay. Frame seven, leave the patch on. Frame eight, leave the patch on. Frame nine, leave the patch on. Frame 10, why does frame 10 look weird? It's because Photoshop glitched for a second. Frame nine, frame 10, the patch is fine. 11, patch is fine. 12, we got the sun coming in. 13, 14, I think the patch is fine. Yeah. 15, patch is not fine. 
16 patch is not fine. I have to turn it off. 17 patch is fine. 18. So it's this extra step. But it shows how you can add components into your, your stage as needed. And then, of course, at the very end, I need to trash the frame that just shows that last layer. Now, I can play it through, but I need to set a timing. So my general default timing for the way I animate, this is my animatic timing, which is about three frames per second, is a 0.3 second uh, timing of each frame. So it means it will play each of these for a, th a little faster than a third of a second. And what I actually like to do is make the window nice and big, but not full screen. Hit play and then move it so I'm not seeing this. So I can just watch the animation without being distracted. And judge all the different components that need to be moving. So first I've got my creature movement. Is the body consistently moving? Yes, the body's moving, kind of dancing back and forth. It doesn't like freeze for a while and then start moving again. What about the head? The head, while it's on the body, is moving. Now the accordion, the little accordion thing, that seems to work. The hand, it's pinching, and then it's letting go. Yep, all that seems to work. And now, lastly, the sun. Is the sun kind of moving in a trajectory that's pretty even? That was the big headache. Yes. And then all except for this little patch in the atmosphere of my background, which is a little less opaque, and so the sun starts to look a little too sharp there. That's not a big deal. That's a finished animation. Now, there are other things I can do on the timeline still. If I want, I've already set it to reset, so it plays as a nice endless loop, and that's fun. But if I wanted to extend the time when my creature is just moving. I can do a few things. It's kind of tricky, but what I can do is duplicate this last frame. And Instead of having the patch on and that last frame turned on, I can turn on the first frame. Turn the patch on. So basically, I now have a, an extra frame of the first frame. But what I first need to do is I need to make a duplicate of my last frame where I get rid of the pizza right there. So I'm going to make a new layer. These are all the problems when you, you're not doing it in assets. This is called animating on the stage. And what I'm going to do, let's see. I'm going to steal from this section from my first frame, duplicate it, move that up above everything. Now that duplicate has been added to every frame. Huh, why don't I see it? Oh, because I duplicated from the wrong layer. Ah, so go back before. I brought all that forward. Just going back in my history. History is very helpful. So I lasso this. I need to steal it from... Oh, this is tricky because of the patch. <laughs> All right, what I'm going to do is make a new layer where I say option, layer merge visible. This is me thinking it through in real time. So layer merge visible. And you can see that now that has replaced all of my frames with that new merge visible layer. So I'm going to take all of these and I'm going to turn it off in those frames. Because remember, this timeline programs it. So it goes now from here to here to here. A duplicate, so I can get rid of this one. To here. 